This video is about this automatic lubricator. It's basically speaking an electronic. It kind of it classes as electronic, but it's very simple. It's a electronic device that will gradually push the grease in this container out through this port and into the grease inlet port of a uh, bearing and a factory machine. And the clever thing about it is, uh, by default, it comes set to off. This is probably just as well. But you can set it to the time that you want the grease to be dispensed over. So say, for instance, if it's a, a very high usage machine, you can set it to one and that will dispense all the grease over the course of one month. If, however, it's very low use, you can set it to 12 or all the numbers in between and it will gradually dispense the grease over a year. And that can save a lot of uh, work. So let's turn that back off. It's not going to splunge the grease everywhere. Well, it is by the time I've opened it because we are going to open it. So traditionally in the factory equipment, you'd have a grease gun and some would go around, they'd push this uh, flexible or solid tube onto a grease nipple and then they'd sort of basically pump grease in on a regular basis. The first level of automation is this very, very simple spring-loaded one. The spring-loaded one has a chamber with a programmable grease dispensing speed set by the viscosity of the grease and... Uh, the spring you use and inside is a plunger that rides up and down inside here and it's pushed down by that spring that's got a large o-ring in the side and the way you use these well let me put it back together it's much easier to put back together with a weak spring this thread is just absolutely a nightmare to get started especially under the power of a spring it's not a fun thing but once you've actually set it up that's it but the idea is you screw this permanently onto the grease nipple inlet and uh, you've got another grease nipple on the side here. You connect your grease gun onto it and you pump it up and to fill that cavity with grease and push that plunger up to about this line here. You don't go too far because a grease gun can actually put a lot of force in and they've got specific warnings saying if you do it too far it'll burst the top off and then there's a big spring to assist in it, that flying projectile. But once you've done that you take the grease gun off and note that you don't just pull grease guns off, you tilt it over to the side and twist to actually get it off. It's the easiest way just in case anybody's ever had any problem doing that. And this grease sniffle is basically a one-way valve. You cover it up again and now over a period of time uh, based on how easy it is to force the grease in, the viscosity of the grease and the actual spring, it will gradually push the grease into the unit. And once the, you see that sort of down flush with this then you know it's time to pump it up again. Pump it up. Next version, I'm going to put the grease gun out of the way here. Next version is the chemical version, which is interesting. This has a, it's basically a syringe full of grease. And you get to choose with these little chemical tablets, the release time. So say for instance, this is one month, this is three months, and this is 12 months. I think there's supposed to be a six month option. And what happens with this is there's a little set of jaws. And this is where I'm going to completely ruin it by actually fingering the pill. But if I squeeze these jaws at the side, let's zoom down this. If I squeeze these jaws at the side, it will release the little pill. And this is a specially formulated material. It also seems to have a metallic coating outside. I wonder if it's designed to do an initial burst. But the idea is that uh, when you put this in, there's liquid in here, and I'll shake it so you can hear it. Hear the liquid? So there is a liquid in here, and when you put this in, there's a seal at the bottom that gets broken as this gets pushed in. This little nib here presumably puts pressure on that, and it does three things. It breaks that seal. As it goes in, it drops the pill into the liquid, and then this seal here will then make the new seal. And what happens then is that little pill effervesces, almost like, you know, you get the Alka-Seltzer and you drop it in the glass and it creates lots of fizz. It does that very slowly for the programmed duration of whatever they've put into this to actually slow down the rate. And that causes gradual release of gas over up to a year, forcing the plunger down and forcing the grease out. But now we're on to the exciting one, which we're going to open. As you'll put the other stuff out the way. This one uses uh, gas generation, possibly using a dedicated type of battery designed to release the gas. And uh, 
And I'm not sure how this opens. There is this little slot here. It does say that you can open them for uh, to actually basically take the batteries out for safer environmental dis uh, disposal. Uh, I'm going to put a screwdriver. I'm going to apply unreasonable force in here. It's just popped out. Is it intact? It is intact. What do we have? Right, tell you what. At the bottom, we have... Oh, so this is just producing all the gas in here. That is amazing. Oh, I see what they're doing. That's very clever. Right, okay. So we have a little wiper here. And as you turn it round, it's going around this resistor. Can you see this? Tell you what, I'm going to focus on this resistor so you can see it. So I'm going to focus down onto that. And then I'm going to zoom up on it. It's basically a pre-programmed resistor with an internal wiper contact going on to the end. So as you turn it to the different uh, settings, it will uh, vary the amount of current flowing through that cell. That is very clever. Right, okay, let's get back down onto the bench here and focus back down onto that. This is where I go complete out focus. And let's see what's in here. This is very, very interesting. It's actually a lot simpler than I was expecting. This is good. Here's one of the electrical connections. Does this mean you could effectively, if they supplied the refilled cartridges? I don't think they will, though. Although, having said that, these things aren't that expensive. Well, I say they're not expensive. They're about £30 each, but you know that is nothing compared to the cost of uh, getting people to do the maintenance and going around with a grease gun on a regular basis. Keep in mind, if you put that on and it lasts a year, that is basically um, a year's regular greasing released. It's, you know, you don't have to go around that often. Here is... What do we have here? It looks like two standard batteries pressed into a little thing, but where's the gas going to come from? I shall... Well, I've tried taking this apart first. Are there going to be any noxious chemicals in it? A's video, it was just grease asunder, and uh, not just grease asunder, it was liquid asunder all over his fingers and everything. Is this a standard battery? Or is this actually the gas cell? This thing was going up, and one connection was going on to the bottom of this, and the other connection was going on to the side of that. So that would have, that's the wiper connection that was going to the back, but which of these produces the gas? And I'm going to measure this with a meter. It's set to 20 volts, that'll do. Let's try and rescue this lead that I've jammed. On a circuit board. Is this going to be 1.5 volt per cell? 0.3. Okay, are these custom chemical cells then? It almost looks like it. I was expecting that to be a standard alkaline type cell. But it looks as though it may be a chemical reaction with that resistance that... Uh, right, tell you what, I'm going to try and get this apart. Uh, and then I'll take pictures of it so you can see it, if there's anything to see. Right, tell you what, one moment please. And we're back and wow, just wow, this is utterly amazing. Now, the reason there was a cup joining these two cells together... I thought there was going to be some membrane in here with like a chemical soaked into it so that it caused electrolysis and gas that way. No, it doesn't. And I wondered why there were labels over the backs of the two cells. Both the cells had a label over the back and I peeled one off and it revealed two little holes, suggesting these may actually be zinc air style batteries. So this is the one I've peeled off. So the one on the left still has a label on. Let's put that over there. And this one has a label peeled off, allowing air to enter it. But they're not actually allowing you to enter it. They're using it in a sort of reverse way. If I bring in a meter, uh, let's put it over here where it's a bit more visible, and I go to the one that's still got the tab in the back, the voltage measured is about 0.4 volts. If I go to the one that I've peeled the tab off, 
the voltage has shot up to 1.3 volts, which is, strange enough, the voltage of a zinc air battery once you peel the tab off it. One of the most safe and inert batteries about. No real need to salvage the batteries out of these before disposing of them. It's very, very inert materials. So what they're doing here is they have got two presumably zinc air batteries with their seals still intact. And that's going, by the time it's sealed into this unit, with its little o-ring here to stop the gas getting out here, the only way the gas can get out is to displace the grease out by pushing that plunger down. I don't think there's anything else down there. I think that really is just, just the plunger. It is just the plunger. If I squeeze it, is it going to... Yeah, it's going to, it's going to build up a lot of pressure. That's impressive. But, um, once it's in there, any oxygen that might penetrate in isn't going to have, really have much effect. But what it will be doing, because the batteries are bridged and because it's that low base voltage, I'm guessing it must just be creating gas out of the chemistry inside. It's venting out the holes that would normally let the air in. And it will squeeze its way either through these labels or under the adhesive at the side. And that's what liberates the gas. But to vary the time duration, they have a custom potentiometer here, which has little segments, little metal uh, conductive ink segments, and then the resistive carbon loaded ink over the top. So that from the first segment here is about 2.6k, and then it's basically another 2.6k all the way around to about 30k when it runs to the end. And then when you run it right off the end to where there's nothing, that's it in the off position. It is so simple. And also, the way they've got these just stacked uh, in here with that little joining cup to actually bridge over the fact, because if they just sat these together, uh, it wouldn't make connection because of that uh, sealing membrane there, uh, the protective cover. But uh, if they'd, uh, they use that cup to bridge them across, it sits in and then just this little thing clips in over the front and the side contacts make contact with the positive at the back and the negative contact clips decisively in here the negative contact makes contact with the uh, inner contact of this and then that outer ring just wipes around it and all it's doing is just putting a resistor across the cells let me show you the schematic you're not going to be impressed it's two cells two cells and a resistor that can run right off the end to turn it off that is it how genius is that um, I wonder how much work it took to develop that because the diameter of this will be have been determined, I suppose, ultimately by the the current and diameter will be the two factors here for the amount of gas produced. And by the time it gets to the end, how much more uh, gas can it put out? I wonder if it's got a good allowance. I guess maybe it might vent excess gas out the back once the pressure builds up too high. Very, very intriguing. Totally Nothing like I was expecting. I was expecting something sophisticated. Not two of these, what appear to be zinc air cell batteries. Oh, here's a close-up of the potentiometer. It doesn't really show a lot more because it's very black. It's very black, but it shows these little segments. that I don't know if this is going to show up at all, but they actually form little uh, steps. And I think they've also got other segments in here to regulate it so that it's a very decisive resistance between each step. And I thought it might be some variable resistance so that over the course of a, a year it would allow for the voltage dropping slight. But I don't know if that happens with uh, the zinc air battery. So it is just a fixed step of about 2.65 thousand ohms per month required of gas liberation. That is very clever. Um, so if you're looking for automatic lubrication for equipment, the SKF System 24 automatic lubricator is so simple that really could anything go wrong. So that's it. Very clever. Not really much to say about it. Well, there's lots to say about it, really. But uh, it, it's all summed up in a few words just because it's a miracle of optimization. It's such a clever application. So if you know, uh, I'm going to have to do a bit of research on zinc air cells now. I didn't immediately see indications that they liberate gas. I wonder who came up with that idea. It's very clever. It is, in fact, genius.